While extremely important in life after graduation, managing money isn't always the focus of high school classes. However, personal financial literacy is a course here at PHS that is incredibly beneficial to students and their future financial success. Prosper football coaches gather every Friday to discuss their agenda and goals for the players to achieve in the week ahead. Each meeting a motivational word is assigned which can be applied both on and off the field. Last weekend, the PHS Talonettes hosted the 20th annual Daddy-Daughter Dance. Find out how the Sweethearts of Prosper make potential future Talonettes stays a little more special. Live from Studio 301 at Prosper High School, this is Eagle Nation News. Good morning, Eagle Nation, and thank you for joining us. Today is Friday, April 16th. I'm Will Carlisle. And from six feet away, I'm Grace Esquivel. Brooklyn Center, Minnesota police officer Kim Potter was convicted of second-degree manslaughter on Wednesday, April 14th. The conviction was decided after the fatal shooting of Dante Wright on Sunday, April 11th, which sparked protests throughout the week, causing Brooklyn Center police to enact a 10 p.m. curfew. On Wednesday, President Joe Biden formally announced the plan to withdraw U.S. military presence in Afghanistan by September. The withdrawal timeline will coincide with the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attack that initially led the United States to engage in the longest conflict in American history. Many Prosper residents may have noticed the new 7-Eleven store that has opened in early April at the intersection of Preston and Frontier. When 7-Eleven was looking for a new location for the 7th Evolution store, Prosper, quote, ticked all the boxes. This is just the next step in 7-Eleven's goal to develop its desired cutting-edge shopping experience. Every week, Prosper High School's football coaches work together to come up with an inspirational word that drives the students to achieve their best. Sailor Jane McKenzie takes a closer look at the meaning behind the football's word of the week. Millions of people getting much needed energy boost starting the day with cups of coffee. But for Prosper High School football players, their morning energy boost starts at the crack of dawn with a brown ball. Head football coach Brandon Schmidt came up with word of the week in order to encourage players to perform their best on the field at all times. It's a way for us to kind of focus our kids' attention on something every week. So we have a different topic every week, and it really just gives them something that they can grasp onto and a way for us to focus every week. The Prosper football coach's intentions with Word of the Week is for it to make an impact on players' lives on and off the field. Being in athletics in Prosper ISD and being a football player at Prosper High School is about more than being a football player. It's also about helping them grow as young men. And so the word of the week, we have a different coach speak every day on the word of the week. And basically, we're just trying to give all of the boys, you know, kind of little mini life lessons that they can hopefully take with them, that they can learn from and implement in their day-to-day -day lives. Reporting for Eagle Nation News, I'm Sailor Jean McKenzie. While football season ended many months ago, a variety of sports are still in full swing. Let's kick it to Emily Baldwin with today's Game Time Sports update. Thanks, Will. There's so much to cover in Prosper Sports this week, including lacrosse, tennis, wrestling, track and field, softball, and baseball. The girls lacrosse team will be making its first ever playoff appearance this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. at home against South Lake Carroll. The PHS varsity team competed in the district championship on Tuesday and Wednesday with two players booking themselves a trip to regionals. The boys team notched the district runner-up title with senior Jet Anderson and junior Drew John taking first in doubles. On the girls' side, junior Ava Kirkendall and sophomore Rachel Rajamoni placed third in the tournament. Track and field is also in its postseason and competed in the area meet yesterday. The girls placed six out of 15 teams and three girls are moving on to regionals. Junior Aubrey O'Connell for the 3200, 1600 and 800, sophomore Kate Blanchowski in pole vault and sophomore Kayla Watson in long jump. Junior Jackson Lands will be representing the boys track and field team as he is also advancing to regionals for the 200 meter dash. The Prosper wrestling team is also in the spotlight for its third place overall finish at the district meet. The girls finished second with junior Taylor Martinez earning the championship crown in her weight division. Senior John Richardson was also named champion for his group and the team has several regional qualifiers. These athletes will compete in regionals this weekend at Allen High School. Congratulations to all the Eagles who have competed in postseason meets and good luck to those who are moving on. Softball and baseball are our last sports still in season, and both teams are on winning streaks, upsetting opponents left and right. The baseball team dominated on the diamond on Tuesday against Denton Braswell, running away with a 10-4 win. As a result, the Eagles are currently ranked number one in the area and are on a 15-game winning streak. They're hoping to keep that going tonight as they face off against Braswell again at 7.30 p.m., this time at Denton Braswell. Softball has been making headlines as well, sitting at 19-3-1 on the season and destroyed the McKinney High Lions last Friday with a 15-0 win. 
The girls face off against Denton Braswell tonight at 7 p.m. I know I've already covered so much, but I just can't go without mentioning Luca's game-winning three-pointer from Wednesday night that seemed to appear on just about every sports social media account, including the Grizzlies. Luca's clutch three gave the Mavs a 114-113 finish over Memphis, clinching their 30th win this season. When we return, find out how one PHS senior proved that hard work truly does pay off in significant ways. Creating an animation is a very enduring process and takes extreme dedication. Emily Baldwin spoke to a student who took interest into the process and found tremendous success at a state competition. Creating an animation can take hundreds of hours and extreme dedication. Students normally produce many animations before creating a competition-worthy submission, but Max Haven succeeded on just his first try. I probably spend four or five hours a day and then in total like across three months it was probably about 400 hours I think and then there was over 3,000 hand-drawn frames. I had to really rule out not being too ambitious. I always want to make like this really grand storyline with all these arcs and all these characters but I just realized how difficult it was especially within the time frame. Although film at Prosper High School doesn't really teach animation, Mr. Logan saw a light in Max and pushed him in the direction of his newfound hobby. Max has been doing uh, above and beyond and projects for the last three Three years and I remember when he was a sophomore he was adding after effects animations to his projects without me asking and so I knew he had a knack for it and he knew how to operate the programs he is really good considering his first project made it to fourth in state it's pretty impressive very talented kid I have high expectations for him in his career while this is Max's first animation, it certainly won't be his last, as he already has new projects brewing. So my next project is I'm doing an animation for a Grammy-nominated band. Pretty crazy to be able to do something like that. I can't share everything about it because it's still a work in progress, uh, but it's my first like ever real professional thing working with these people. It's great, and uh, having such a great opportunity and the exposure is amazing. Reporting for Eagle Nation News, I'm Julia Bizayon. I'm expecting to see some of Max's animations on the big screen in the future, but for now we have America's beloved reality show, The Bachelor, to enjoy. Here with some surprising information from a former Bachelor is Zach Manning. Thanks, Grace. Former Bachelor star Colton Underwood recently announced in an interview with Robin Roberts on Good Morning America that he is homosexual. In his interview, Underwood told Roberts, quote, I came to terms with that earlier this year and have been processing it, and the next steps in all of this was sort, was sort of letting people know. In other entertainment news, after four years of dating and two years of engagement, Jennifer Lopez and former Yankees third baseman Alex Rodriguez have officially announced that they are splitting. They said, quote, We have realized we are better off as friends and look forward to remaining so. We wish the best for each other. Spending quality time with family can be important in connecting individuals in a meaningful way. Allison Wood describes how the Prosper Talonettes brought a unique bonding experience to dads and daughters alike. On April 10th, the Talonettes held their 20th annual Daddy-Daughter Dance, themed Boots and Bling. This year's dance looks slightly different as all participants except those below third grade were required to wear masks and food was pre-packaged. Making sure everything's just running smoothly, it helps us on our part to just move around and be able to stretch our legs. And it's also beneficial to the dads and daughters to be able to talk to new people. Although COVID precautions still took place, that didn't stop the girls from having fun with their dads or taking pictures with the Talonettes. The dance has become a popular way for dads and their daughters to spend time together, even selling out all the offered tickets. Not only did the girls receive shirts and souvenirs, but live music courtesy of a DJ was also featured. Inside the arena was yet another photo opportunity with the Talonettes, giving the girls and their dads everything they needed for a night to remember. I'm Allison Wood, reporting for Eagle Nation News. After this short break, Mithra Kama takes a look at the witty rivalry between Prosper High's very own Dr. Burdett and Rock Hill's Mr. Toth. PHS Principal Dr. Burdett and Rock Hill Principal Mr. Toth are taking part in a friendly competition to raise money for graduation celebration. Eagle Nation News got the exclusive on the current tension between the two opponents.
Graduation celebration in haiku. Leader of Rock Hill, Mr. Toth knows the real deal. Kissing pigs or cows? I don't think I'm gonna win this competition because Dr. Brett eats, and so he's gonna figure out a way uh, for PHS to win. So my hopes aren't very high. Uh, We're gonna do so much that they're gonna wish they'd never joined the competition. We will win because we are Prosper High School. Since this is for the kids, you know, when he signs his email, it says for kids, that he needs to keep that in mind. Uh, and uphold the integrity of the competition and, um, you know, do things fairly uh, for once because that would be really appreciated. Propel Mr. Toth to the reason he is on this round orb we call Earth to kiss a pig or to kiss a cow. Emily Wright is a PHS senior who took the initiative to help children facing domestic violence and neglect. Mithra Kama is in studio with her in this week's edition of The Perch. Thanks, Will. I'm Mithra Kama, and with me today, I have Emily Wright. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. Tell me, what is the cause you are working towards, and how are you trying to improve it? I am creating summer kits filled with mental health worksheets and activities to no donate to the Children's Advocacy Center with the intent of helping victims of child abuse and also students facing help problems with mental health and I will be donating to them. So what motivated you to bring this program to PHS? Um, my uncle actually committed suicide so that's given me a passion for helping victims and people struggling with mental health and I also have a joy for working with kids, which combined has given me the motivation to create these summer kits. So how can students and teachers help you improve the lives of these children? Students and teachers can help by putting donations of crayons and coloring books in the big box in the front foyer labeled summer kits or taking them to room 2214 by April 20th. Awesome, thank you. Many students leave high school feeling unprepared for the real world. Madeline Wentz has more information on a class at PHS that guides students on how to manage their money. After graduation, students are bombarded with financial responsibilities and they don't always know how to properly handle them. The personal financial literacy class at PHS is educating students on how to manage their funds and better their futures. We teach all sorts of different stuff related to finances, so how to manage your money, how to make money, what to do when you get money, how you should save it, how you should invest it, why you should invest it, all those things. Anything involving money, we talk about it. Personal financial literacy teacher Mr. Crookston teaches his students how to properly handle credit, savings, and investments. He also stresses the importance of keeping to a budget. If you start to run out of your money, it starts causing problems, and so you want to make sure that you are buying the right things, putting this money aside for retirement and things you want, and so it's essential that you manage it correctly so that you can get the stuff you want in life. According to a study conducted by Ohio State University in 2015, 7 out of 10 college students felt stressed about their finances. This stress came from the pressures of loan debt on top of regular monthly expenses. High schools offering classes to educate students on the real world of money can greatly reduce their worries. Teenagers are always talking about, oh, in school we learn all these things, but it's not real life applications. We don't learn how to do our taxes. We don't learn how to manage our paycheck. And that's what this class is. The personal financial literacy class is just a semester long, but within that time, students are able to be better prepared for college and beyond. I'm Madeline Wentz reporting for Eagle Nation News. That's all we have for you today, Eagle Nation. I'm Grace Esquivel. And I'm Will Carlisle. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>